what is up everybody shauna d man here and welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are doing great i hope you guys are having yourselves a good weekend or a good start of your week depending on when you are watching this if you're new to the channel welcome be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and be sure to comment on your thoughts on the video afterwards but the past couple of weeks i have been doing kind of a retrospect retrospective of movies I watched when I was younger and just gave my first thoughts about it during that time. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a retrospective of Sleepaway Camp, which was like, a, a, I think, 1983 is when it, when it came out. And then I also did the original Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger and gave what it was like watching that movie for the first time. So that's kind of what these are, just giving my personal thoughts and what my personal experience was watching uh, certain movies and things like that growing up. So this isn't going to be like a, you know, we're going to go scene by scene uh, thing of, 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 the, of this movie, um, The Strangers, uh, because I thought this was a good opportunity to uh, put this out now with the strangers chapter one coming out this upcoming weekend. So I thought, again, I thought it was a pretty good opportunity because uh, originally I was going to do, uh, an alien video with alien Romulus coming out later on this year. Uh, but I thought this was perfect timing. So it worked out really well. Um, uh, but yeah, the strangers, this was a, uh, 2008 kind of, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you would, uh, let me see what's it. I have it brought up on, on my other screen so I can remember precisely what I don't know. I, I wouldn't know what you would describe it as. It's not necessarily a horror movie. Probably maybe suspense thriller. Um, but uh, man, this this is one of my all time favorite movies growing up as a kid. I didn't see this in theaters. Uh, I bought the DVD. Uh, at my local mall when FYE was still a thing. I, well, actually, it might, it might still be a thing. I'm not entirely, not entirely sure. But I bought a DVD of the movie, but I did remember seeing, uh, you know, trailers and stuff like that for it. 2008 was also the same year we got Iron Man. Um, 2008, I think I was maybe going into my sophomore year of high school. I think that's right. But, uh, and typically I didn't necessarily go to the movies that, that often as, uh, at, you know, growing up, it's just, unless I was going with friends, but, um, but yeah, the strangers 2008 movie, this movie, like I mentioned, is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, it, it just the sheer creepiness of this movie. Now it is said to be based on a true story. Um, from my understanding, looking at it, looking at or not looking at it, but looking more into it, it's now there, there may have been certain parts of the movie that are based on true stories, but I think it's just a amalgamation of like like the Manson family murders or you know something along along those lines, and they kind of just created. Uh, this this style of movie from those kind of experiences. Now, obviously, I'm not saying like this particular thing didn't happen. I don't know. I couldn't necessarily find anything for definitive. So if somebody has um, a more reliable source of information to look at with this, I mean, I would like that because this is an interesting uh, movie. And typically, I'm, I'm usually not all that into movie. Well, I am into them, but when they say based on a true story, sometimes it's like a line or it's just something, you know, one little thing. And then the rest is just fabricated around, uh, things that are made up. I don't know, but this movie was, a so middle of high school, me, uh, bought this movie, watched it at home. I, whenever I watch horror movies, I always love watching them in the dark. And if I, out of all my friends, I, I love horror movies. Most of my friends don't. Uh, except, uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I'm the only one out of my friend group. But uh, And so watching this movie for the first time, 
was it was such a it was just something um it, it there's not like jump scares or anything like that in this movie it's just the uneasiness of being in that in that kind of position uh within this movie so the movie opens you have Liv taylor who is playing uh, a woman named Kristen. And you also have Scott Speedman, who is playing James. The movie opens with them making their way to, uh, if I remember right, James is like, not summer home. It's not, it's not, I don't think it's his. It may be his parents. Uh, but they just, they just returned from an event. Um, and you can just tell that there's a little bit of tension between the two. You're not exactly sure what it is. But you come to find out that he proposed to her and she basically said no. Um, listen, man, he put in the effort, too, because he had like roses and everything all sprung out through the house. He had champagne ready to go. He was fully expecting her to say yes. And it did. She said no. And so, uh, you know, feel for the guy. Um it doesn't take long for the movie to like kind of get going, which I, you know, it's really good. The movie was only, uh, how long was this movie? I don't fully remember. Let's see. Well, hold on, let me go back here. I don't remember how long it is. It's not a very long movies. Uh, let's see. It was a hour and 31 minute movie. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So it, it really technically gets going relatively quick, which I appreciate for a movie like this. So they're just having a conversation about, you know, about the night. He, he plans on calling a friend to come pick him up. She can stay the night and he'll be back in the morning, probably like take her home. Obviously, he is feeling very upset because the woman that he was in love with, uh, he wanted to spend the rest of his life with, said no to the proposal. So obviously, any guy will feel pretty lousy during that time. And so he just felt it was best that they weren't, uh, uh, you know, just around each other that night. Uh, then, uh, there are like some elements. So they pull up to the house first. And obviously there is like just this weird, creepy girl just swinging in the middle of the night. The house itself was like, it's not, it's not in the middle of the woods, but there's nobody else around. Um, cause clearly there's like a, I believe like a street, um, I don't remember exactly the layout of it, but it, it's it's isolated, but it's not alone. Um, you probably will have to walk some distance to get to the next house, maybe. Um, or, or drive, even, even that fact. But they, they pull up to the house, they pull up, and there's a girl just randomly swinging on a swing set. And then camera cuts back to that, that same swing set. She's gone. Uh, and so then we move into the house, you know. We're talking about it, talking about the evening, talking about how, you know, the proposal didn't go well and things like that. Then you get your first knock on the door and you can definitely tell it's the girl from the swing set. And she's, I, I believe she said, um, it's Tabitha home and, uh, uh, Kristen and James are like, no, you, you have the wrong house. And you can even, I'm, if I remember correctly, you can even see the girl because she's like hidden in the dark and you can see her kind of like tilt her head just to see uh inside to see both it's just james and Kristen, and then she just walks off into the woods and come to find out she basically basically untwisted the light bulb and so a first first major red flag right there is just like it's the middle of the night like I think maybe 11 or 12 at night when it's one on all that goes on. And so he decides, so a couple of minutes have passed after that, that little moment. And so James decides he's going to go get some cigarettes. So he takes the car and leaves 
And so we got Kristen here for a little bit by herself. Um, I'm trying to remember the sequence because it's been a while since I've seen the movie. It does, um, so I'm trying to remember the exact sequence of events. Um, she kind of like changes, puts on jeans, that kind of stuff. Um, and there are fire, there are fire alarm, a fire alarm goes off. Uh, she tries to take, she tries to, uh, take down, basically drops it at that same time that it drops. There's another knock on the door. It's the same girl. And she basically asks, asks the same question. Is Tabitha home? She's like, no. And again, she leaves again. Second major red flag. Very like, I, I would at least had like some kind of like weapon in hand, like a knife behind the door just in case. Cause it's the middle of the night and you have this weird girl who seems to be just <laughs> tw untwisting your light bulb and just standing in the dark asking is so-and-so home when she already did it the first time. Like, come on, C come on. Your, your, your fight or flight instinct should be kicking in a little bit at this moment, but uh, so she leaves, she leaves, Kristen closes the door and walks back into the house. We, and then we get a little, uh, not necessarily a blink if you miss it, but the, the fire alarm that fell on the floor is now sitting like on a, I think it was on a chair. And when I first watched that, I was just like, that wasn't like that before. Um, and then one of the best shots of the, of one of the best shots of the movie is Kristen is just kind of like. She's in the kitchen and just looking around. And then one of the main antagonists of the film, the man in the mask slowly creeps out of the back. Uh, and it's just, oh man, it's just, it's just the creepiness of him doing that. It's just him just not saying anything. It's just, just slowly creeping in. Um, and, I'm just, and I remember I was like, like, how did you get in this house? Because obviously there's a front door. I believe there's a side sliding door. Um, I don't remember if there's like anything else, any other door in the house that could have led to, uh, hit, you know, him getting in. But, uh, but obviously James, uh, she James able to he, he makes it back and then this is where kind of things start to really go haywire um and, the, and I, this movie is just i know I, I know i pretty much kind of like was doing a somewhat scene by scene of the movie but like uh the, the, the rest of this movie is just high high tension because you can definitely tell now I'm I'm very curious on how the Strangers Chapter One plays out, um, yeah, because like with this movie, are we getting kind of like the the first time of them killing people? Uh, because it, that, if that's the case, then the ending of this is kind of like mm, it's a little, it's a little eh, and, I, and I'll talk about it in a second, but. You like in this movie, you can tell that these three protagonists, the man, in the mask, the pinup girl, doll face, they have, they've done this before and, they off, and worst case, or, um, that's not the word I wanted to use. Um, or at least the man in the mask and the pinup woman have done this before because at the end of the movie, you know, after they killed Kristen and James, they get in their truck to drive off. They come across uh, two Mormon boys just out doing their business. Uh, and and the, the pinup woman says next time it'll be easier. And so it made, so it was just kind of like, was this doll faces first time doing something like this? So again, this is why I'm very curious to see on how chapter one plays out. Um, if it's going to be consistent or if it's, you know, I, who knows, we'll, we'll definitely see for sure. But, <clears throat> um, just, to, but the main, th the reason I'm, I'm mentioning that is because it never felt like just watching this movie, you don't get the feeling that these three villains of the movie are not never in control. 
of the situation. Um, <clears throat> they could easily, there are several different moments where they can easily uh, kill both James and Kristen. There are several opportunities. Cause one is like, um, Kristen is, is she's, this is later on in the movie, but she's like outside trying to make her way to this, this barn that's behind the house. And like, as she's like crawling, one of the, one of the, I think it's the pinup girl is it clearly walking behind her. And then Kristen turns around and she's just gone. Um, James, he, he easily could have, uh, died as well because there's a uh, point in the movie where he's gonna he's trying to get to the barn that same barn because there's like a radio in there and so he's gonna try to radio for help and this is just after they got a shotgun to try to defend themselves and as he's going to the barn he sees the pinup girl walk out and then all of a sudden man in a mask boom knocks him out you do hear the shotgun go off um so yeah so that's why I'm like like just looking back at it, because when I first watched it, you you don't think much about scenes like that or how or how the movie is like portraying those kind of scenes, and and so looking back at it, you can definitely tell that they they were in, they were in control the entire time, even though James did have a shotgun. Um, they were very they were still very calm, cool, collected. Um. And it's just this, it, it, it was just something. So some of the, some of my favorite scenes of this movie is, um, there's one where James's friend, he, he shows up to get James and he gets out of the car and he kind of walks into the house and then you could see pinup girl just again, slowly creeping out of the darkness. Um, and then you have to just this music playing in the background, like a record playing, uh, in the background. And it's just kind of like, it's just an uneasy situation. And then the man in the mask comes right behind him, prepare to kill him. But he, he uh, James ends up shooting his friend. And uh, it's just funny. It's just ironic because like, after that incident, they they uh, the three villains just just like write killer on a window or on the sliding door, and I'm just like, come on. Um, and then there was a there was a scene where like Kristen is hiding in like a little pantry, and the man in the mask just walks in. Clearly, clearly you can tell he knows where she's at, but again, it's just, it's just a game. It's just a cat and mouse game of what they're doing with these two people, uh, during this night. But he just like goes and he just sits there at the table for like a couple of minutes, then gets up and, and just walks, walks away. Uh, and then, and then Dollface pops up and, and starts terrorizing Kristen. Um, and then, so the ending of the movie is, is, uh, you know, both get captured. I mean, it is pretty, it is, it is pretty, I don't want to say sweet. I'm not sure how, how I want to describe it, but like she, she, Kristen puts on the wedding ring. I mean, you're both about to die. So I, I don't, uh, whatever though. Um, and then they, then the, the three villains just take off their mask. And I, I guess, I guess that was just a signal to, you know, James and Kristen that you're not going to, you've seen our faces now. So now obviously you're not going to survive. Um, and it's, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just a mess of a night. Like they spent this entire night running for their lives. And obviously it, it ultimately ends up in her death or so we think, because I think I can't remember if, it, if this is like actually at the ending of the movie or is it like a deleted scene, but like the, the Mormon boys that I, I mentioned earlier, they show up, they kind of like 
come to the house and see all the damage that's been done to the like the truck and just they go into the house and obviously find the bodies of Christian and James just laying there and one of them goes to touch Christian and she just grabs them and just bloody Mary screams and the movie just cuts um I don't really don't necessarily know what happened you know I don't want to say it's like open-ended whether or not she survived or not. Um, Cause obviously we don't see her in the sequel, but um, she could. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, this movie was just something else. And it's just, just my favorite, one of my all time favorite horror movies. It's a movie that I could watch over and over and never really get bored with it. Uh, just because it's just such a fun movie. I remember showing it a couple of years ago when I was in college. Um, I had some friends over one night and uh, we were watching some movies and this was one of the movies that we watched. And there were two girls in our group in our friend group that typically they, they don't do well with horror movies whatsoever. And so I, uh, we watched this movie and <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think it was a scene I mentioned earlier when, uh, the man in the mask is kind of like slowly creeps out of the back the very first time you see him and uh, both of them, both the girls just, just like screamed their heads off and it was just kind of like come on <laughs> but it, it was the thing They're, they they don't do well with horror movies and like I said a lot of my friends don't do well with horror movies but it was a very fun experience just watching them uh, <laughs> get scared like that but man, it, yeah, it's, it's such a, I think, and I still have the DVD too, actually. So I have it right here. So it still has a sticker on it. Where did I buy this from? You know what? This still has the FYE sticker on it. Wow. Actually, that's, oh, uh, that's, uh, yeah, man, it's, love it unrated i don't remember what because this has this has uh this has the theatrical cut and unrated version i don't remember what the unrated version was i might have to rewatch this so i can uh remember what it was but we'll see we'll see but man i am i'm excited for the strangers chapter one like i mentioned i'm very excited to see this movie this even though i'm not all that i mean i enjoy the strangers pray at night uh i just feel like it it just quite doesn't hit the same level as this first one did um and in, in, in the sheer tone of the creepiness and, and everything about it so i it's it is what it is so i'm, I'm hoping the strangers chapter one obviously it's going to be a different twist and it's going to be very different from the 2008 movie. Um, and I think they've, they've come out and they've said, so that we get, we're getting this one this upcoming week. And then the next one is already going to come out this October, November. So they're kind of they're doing three films and they're just going to release them relatively quick. Uh, what was the budget of the strangers? So this was back in, so let's see, they started in strange began on October 10th, 2006, finished in early 2007. They had a budget of $9 million. And you, you don't need much out of this. Uh, you like that's, you don't need much out of this kind of movie. There's no like CGI. There's no uh, anything crazy. Most of the stuff or you could do with practical effects and uh, what did it get? So it got a 49% on Rotten Tomatoes. I necessarily don't care about Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's got a, let's see, got a 6.1 out of 10 on IMB. IMDB. What did it get? Let's see. Uh, 
So it had a budget. Uh, so it had a budget of nine million dollars, and the box office it, it grossed eighty two eighty two point four million dollars. Now that's that's U.S. wide, I think. No, it's worldwide. Probably back then that was probably considered. I don't know what that would have been considered a lot, or it. It, it, it's definitely a hit, uh, almost a hundred million dollars on a nine million dollar budget. That's actually relatively good. I wonder. Let's see, what was the budget of? Of chapter one that comes out this week. Hmm. I don't think it, uh, hmm. okay, I don't think it's going to tell me. Okay, I probably won't be able to really find. Uh, Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's not gonna tell me. Okay, that's fine. That's not all that big a deal. Well, I'm sure we'll find out a little bit later on. But, but yeah, very excited for this movie. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Um, then once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for indulging in my trip down memory lane about some of the movies that I love. Uh, I I do have a lot more I'm planning on doing. So. Um, if you've ever at this point, I'm sure everybody has seen the two movies, The Strangers and The Strangers Pray at Night. If you've seen both or if you've seen one, be sure to comment below and tell me what you thought about those movies. Uh, but other than that, you be sure to check out the channel. Uh, plenty of content, video game, podcasting, plenty of stuff out here for you guys to enjoy. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. See you.